If you're at all compelled about the longevity and expansion of the Miz T Show, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Links below. Hey there, fools. Big T back with another video. And uh, it's been a while since I did a video quite like this. Uh, but let's go ahead and get into it. I want to talk about uh, the stupid, uh, ongoing stupidity when it comes to Switch and Switch ports uh, and things like that. Seems like uh, apparently Nintendo consoles, only when Nintendo consoles get a port, there's all kinds of buffoonery. <laughs> going on about that so I'm gonna talk about that I'm also gonna talk about uh, more about the switch tax and uh, basically why uh, it never bothered me I said that from the beginning um, even before the switch came out I talked about it in podcast on the juice is loose uh, make sure you check us out on Terminator juices channel I'll leave a link in the description below uh, we always have a great discussion every week so come check us out but like I said, uh, we're going to talk about ports and kind of the scrutiny they've been getting. Um, and some of the stuff is okay, like it makes sense just from a bassist sense. But like, if you really like start to get into it, you understand how stupid a lot of the arguments are. So first we're going to start off talking about the Wii U, everyone's favorite whipping boy, uh, the Wii U. Um, and this game here, Batman Arkham City Armored Edition, which I was very excited to wait for. Um, I played Arkham Asylum beforehand, and this game here came out a year later because obviously the Wii U wasn't on the market when this game came out, uh, the original game without the Armored Edition, uh, Arkham Arkham City. And uh, I was willing to wait. Um, first of all, I have plenty of games to play. I always do because I have multiple games and consoles. Uh, but um, I wanted to see what the new quote-unquote gimmick was with the with the Wii U and that is the gamepad and I wanted to see how the gamepad enhances the games and and this game for me was one of the proving grounds for the gamepad um, and how it worked because basically it was Batman's utility belt in the game and that was pretty cool it was, I thought it was really well implemented and I definitely missed it in the subsequent sequels, um, uh, Batman Arkham Origins, I believe, was the next game, and it didn't have that mechanic, and that really bothered me. Uh, but I was willing to wait and buy this game uh, when I believe it was probably, I don't know, 20 or $30 on other consoles. I had a 360, as you can see, there's a 360 game there. I had a 360 at the time, but I wanted to play it on. Uh, my favorite hardware uh, so um, I waited for this edition and I was not disappointed um, but you know people like I said people say there's a problem with you know uh, ports uh, when they come in, when they came to Wii U they were late and they were full priced and again like I said earlier that is a okay gripe it's an understandable gripe um, but people just dismiss your desire for that game on that, you know, that more price to higher price game on that console just because, um, there are other options. So what? There are other options. You're not the only one that has those options. <laughs> like I said, I had a 360 at the time, had a PS3. Um, I could have easily bought, uh, Arkham City on those consoles. I could, um, at the time I could have bought it cheaper, but I wanted the Armored Edition because, of what I thought it brought to the table and I, for me it enhanced the game so uh, we're getting the same situation now with this uh, switch and its ports it's uh, late ports and they're not even as late like I believe Skyrim uh, didn't come out a year uh, it was like maybe six months or seven months or something like that after uh, the other versions and uh, <clears throat> the other remastered versions, and that's what this is, the remastered version for Switch. Um, and it obviously it was $60 at the time. 
and I've shown uh, in other videos that I have Skyrim, the the base edition and the which one is it the legendary edition or whatever it's called on my 360, and I still bought this again full price because of the novelty of Switch and being able to play a game like this on the go uh, was compelling enough for me to spend the money. And I'm not a peasant, so I can afford it. And I'm not sure why other people are in other people's wallets or purses. In this gaming community, it's strange, but it happens a lot. But, you know, I can buy this game. I'll, I'll probably end up buying it again on PC because it is a game I enjoy. Uh, you never really end. I mean, obviously you can end uh, the main quest of the game, but for me, Skyrim is kind of a life simulator. It's kind of a, uh, a medieval simulator, being able to put yourself on that world and uh, kind of live and breathe in that world. So it's a game will, for me, will always keep, uh, keep on giving. So And to have this game uh, with its grindy nature, because it is an RPG, to be able to play it anywhere is a great thing, especially for somebody of advanced years <laughs> like myself. I don't have the time to play video games as much as I used to. So the novelty of being able to play anywhere, anytime is great for me. Um, and so I was willing to spend the money for that. And I don't see why it's your business <laughs> or why it's strange or anything like that. But for some people, they just can't stand it. And obviously with Doom, um, um, and there's concessions obviously with the, the Switch version because it's not as powerful and the uh, the I believe the, the its biggest hindrance is the storage media that it chooses to use and that is the tiny little cartridges and they're expensive you know and uh, some games it's okay but some companies don't want to spend the extra money for the bigger space and so you have issues with that but those are concessions you take because you want to be able to enjoy its portable uh, portable nature uh, it's uh, ability to play anywhere anytime and you take those concessions again I've played well I played the demo of doom on uh, my PC and I have a powerful gaming PC as well I have a steam account um, so I can play the best version of these games but I choose not to because I like my ecosystem of Nintendo um, and it will be the console I'll be playing with the most and so Again, anytime, anywhere, um, I can play this game like I want to. And for somebody like me, it is a great thing to have. And yeah, you lose, you have some concessions with the resolution and the frame rate. Um, but Doom, especially, it, it's really fast for a 30 frame per second game. Um, I know some people will hear that and say, like, oh, that's just, you know, you're making excuses trying to make the game. No, it really is a fast game. I. I I'm surprised that it's 30 second or 30 frames per second because it does it's very fluid and like again I played the PC version and it feels like doom the uh, this version also feels like doom and now with the motion controls and I haven't even really gotten into that yet and I love motion controls so that is cool like that is a great thing and obviously we have Wolfenstein 2 coming um, I have actually have the poster here on my desk I'll show you um, and it's a game I've been looking forward to. Again, I have an Xbox One. I have a PS4. I have a powerful PC. I can buy this game for much cheaper on those consoles. Um, but I chose to wait. I wanted to play the Switch version of it. Because, again, the novelty of the game and being able to take it anywhere. And now we have direct feed footage of the game. It looks phenomenal on this console. And I, just still, I, I still don't get why... Um, gamers who are supposed to be so tech savvy a lot of these guys are tech heads and tech savvies you know they got this stuff down they can't marvel at the fact that this tiny little let me pull this thing out this tiny little tablet <laughs> you know system here um, can run games anywhere near what the PS4 or an Xbox One could do that should be you know get this thing here why isn't that praised like why do people 
talk about what it can't do. But the fact that it is this form factor and it can do what it does should be something people marvel at. And I just don't understand uh, why it can't be given that praise for what it is. Um, Nintendo could have made a quote unquote traditional console, you know, and you could have got a quote unquote traditional console from Nintendo. And with the tech that this thing's using, it could have easily have been as powerful, if not more powerful than PS4 and Xbox One. Like it could have easily done that. But the novelty would, of the Switch, its main selling point, as far as I'm concerned, would not be there, which is being able to do this, take it out and go anywhere and have pretty much the same experience on a home console in your hands. And that is compelling, that is stellar to me. And I don't understand why so-called wannabe gaming uh, armchair analysts and tech, you know, technologists, uh, tech guys don't marvel at that um, universally. Uh, there, obviously there's some that think this is a marvel that this handheld device that's also a console can do what it does um and there's a lot of people that appreciate that but there's still this contingency of people who oh it can't do this uh, the frame raising is quite well no shit like it's not ever gonna be that it's never gonna be as powerful as a device that sits you know solely sits somewhere it has a huge fan and a huge power supply and you know is gonna run you know up you know upper tier games it, it was not meant to do that um if it was meant to do that it would be that <laughs> you know like uh, you know it would be another big box that sat on your entertainment center and did that but that's the the marvel is this this is the marvel of it so i just i don't get why i just think people are willfully ignorant they just want to be haters they basically just want to hate on the switch which is nothing new. People hate on Nintendo consoles for forever, and you know they'll always be naysayers to Nintendo. But it's it's just jealousy. <laughs> you know that's all it really is, and it's pretty sad. But my last point um, is uh, something I actually brought up in other videos. Um, is the you know so-called switch tax, and I kind of talked about that already, um, and. Even before the Switch came out, um, everybody was talking about cartridges. It looked like Nintendo was going to do the cartridge thing, and they obviously did. And I knew right away that that meant <laughs> you're going to be paying uh, for that convenience. You're going to be paying for that. Um, and, you know, the convenience may not be as convenient as you like, because obviously cartridges don't have the storage space that uh, disc-based media does. But you get other things because of that. Um, the portability aspect. Obviously, if it was a disc-based system, it wouldn't be as portable. So let me see if I can pull out um, a game here. Um, and for this one, I actually don't know, but this is one of my favorite game cases ever. Uh, this is for RoboCop versus the Terminator for Super Nintendo. And um, I believe pretty much every... I would like to say, I mean, again, this is, I'm not sure I should have checked this, but I believe mostly Nintendo games were more expensive than uh, Sega Genesis games, even of the same ilk. Um, and again, you're paying for better performance there, but you're paying also for being able to play that game on your favorite console. And so it's funny because I remember gamers complaining about prices and stuff. And I just wanted to show the price of this game. Let's see if I can get it focused here. Yeah, people complaining about $60 games and what's worth what. And uh, this is essentially, if you play it straight through, this is about maybe a two hour game, um, if you're good. And you just go right through it. Um, and look how much it costs. <laughs> this is uh, $69.95, this is $70 for a two hour game. And so my point of pointing that out is that um, each individual decides the value of what they purchase. It's There's not some universal, this is how it should be type of thing. Every individual decides themselves 
what they are willing to pay for and what is good for them. Um, just because you own a PC and you can get games on Steam, which I also own a PC. I also have a Steam account I've had for a number of years. Um, and I can get games there very cheap. Um, the downside of that for me, as somebody who cares about this, physical media, is that none of my purchases are physical. And, and for me, I will always feel like I don't own them because I don't have a physical box. And so I'm willing anytime to pay more for a physical box. Um, I will pay more um, for that game to be able to sit in my hand um, and not just be in some, you know, uh, on a digital hard drive. So everybody decides what is valuable for them. Everybody decides what the value is for them. And, you know, again, I have all those options that you have, <laughs> but I choose to pay more for what I want. Um, it's my wallet. And I will take from it and give to whoever I want to as much as I want for what I want. <laughs> and I don't understand the lunacy behind uh, people trying to decide, oh, well, that's old or you shouldn't buy that I will buy what I want very simple and uh, so that's it for my video today uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below uh, do you think again I always felt like the switch would be more expensive for certain things and I'm willing to pay that expense for what I want the convenience the physical nature of it um, I will pay more for a physical copy I've always said that and I wish that digital copies were actually cheaper um, from the beginning because they should be because you're not paying for retail space you're not paying uh, for shipping and stuff and these companies aren't paying for that um, they can send it to you directly to you from you know from their servers so <clears throat> that always bothered me and that's why I, that's another reason I don't like digital because I think it's overpriced just for the fact that it's you know overpriced <laughs> you know um the physical and digital shouldn't be the same much the di the the physical should be more but the digital should be less than what it's been it should be less than what the retail is so um but yeah that's it for my little spiel here let me know what you think in the comments below thank you for watching and listening and now see you folks next time peace out